Republicans spent all of last year attacking President Obama and Democrats on jobs. It was the cornerstone of their campaign to take back Congress. They called a health care repeal bill, quote, repealing the job killing health care law act. Very clever. But you know what? It worked for them. They won control of the House. But now, instead of turning all that rhetoric into action on job creation, they're catering to, of course, social conservatives instead. The latest example is their effort to limit abortion as much as possible. And in the process, they are redefining rape. New Jersey Congressman Christopher Smith has introduced a bill called the No Taxpayer Funding for Abortion Act. And 173 other members, 163 of them Republicans, have signed on as co-sponsors. First of all, there already is no taxpayer funding for abortion. President Obama signed an executive order last year making that perfectly clear. But this bill is another way than just wasting more time. They've got a lot more up their sleeve than that. Current law banning funding for abortion has a couple of exceptions, including one for women who are raped. But the new bill says you can only get covered for, quote, forcible rape. So according to the author of the bill, just saying no is no longer enough. Statutory rape is no longer covered, and people who have suffered date rape or who were sexually assaulted while they were drugged might have to prove that it was forcible. 163 Republican co-sponsors. I wonder what the Republican Party actually stands for. For more, let me bring in Colorado Congresswoman Diana DeGette. Congresswoman, uh, is there any chance that this bill is actually going to make it through Congress and become law? Well, Jake, we're quite worried about this bill because, as you point out, uh, we think the top the top priority should be job creation, and instead, this new majority, the bill number one and bill number three, both restrict people's ability to get legal health care procedures. This bill, uh, this bill, this Chris Smith bill you're talking about, is an extreme bill, which not only redefines the term forcible rape, but it basically says that anybody who is employed by somebody who gets a tax credit for buying an insurance policy, which is thousands and thousands of employers right now, cannot buy an insurance policy that gives them coverage for full reproductive services. So this would frankly be the greatest restriction on a woman's right to choose in our lifetimes. And it seems to me, rather than spending all of their time trying to stop people from getting health care services, the Republicans should really be spending their time trying to help people People get jobs. So it isn't just about government funding, it also affects your private health insurance, which of course expands it to o o almost all Americans. So, right. But what I don't right. understand and, and is, uh, what, what does it even mean? Is there any legal definition of forcible rape? Or how would you go and prove that it, it was or wasn't? Well, we're, we're concerned about that provision because, of course, the Hyde Amendment, which is current law, it says, P, it says no federal funding for abortion. That's the current law, except in the instance of rape, incest, or the life of the mother. So this Smith bill amends that to say forcible rape, and that is an archaic term that used to be used where women would have to come in and prove somehow that there was force used in the rape. And uh, we don't understand understand why you would want to change that exception to the Hyde Amendment, would you, uh, I, the only thing we can think of is that they would be trying to make it harder for get rape victims to get medical services to get abortion that they needed. So we are concerned about that, but we're also very deeply concerned that they're extending the prohibitions against funding f to people who are spending their own money for insurance policies. And I really want to stress that to your view because this is not just banning federal funding for abortions. We've already done that. I disagree with it, but it's the law. But what it's saying now is people who somehow get a tax subsidy then can't buy private insurance that covers full reproductive services. And this is, this is a terrible expansion. It's very, very extreme. And frankly, as you said, there are a number of co-sponsors. We are afraid that it will pass the House and why we have good supporters in the Senate and, of course, the 
White House, uh, we need to let people know just how extreme this agenda is and how it's getting in the way of what we really need to be doing in this country, which is creating jobs. Well, obviously, that clause in the bill is uh, beyond extreme at a time when, it, you know, people are most traumatized to go in and try to prove, you know, one way or another so you can get the funding that you desperately need, et cetera. It's unbelievable. Right. But Congressman, do you think that this, they might have put the clause in there to try to kind of move the political spectrum and then at the end they go, all right, we'll take that one objectionable clause out, uh, but let's pass the bill otherwise. Well, you know, last year when we debated the health care bill and there were similar attempts, although not even as extreme as this attempt, but the Stupak Amendment and other attempts last year, this definition was in the original bill and they did take it out at the last minute. So I think in some ways it may be, it, it, it may serve to deflect the debate uh, to say, oh, look, we're so reasonable. But in fact, they are restricting people's ability to get health care coverage with their own money. And, and so so what, whatever they do with that, with that outrageous clause, this bill is extreme, no matter how you look at it. All right, Congresswoman Diane DeGette, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Good to be with you.